Earlier today, Yo Gotti and his big brother, Big Juke, attended the funeral of their uncle. Ironically enough, after attending a funeral, Big Juke would meet his own demise. To that story we told you about off the top of the broadcast, a deadly shooting in Hickory Hill with connections to Memphis rapper Yo Gotti. Good evening, Daniel. Well, at least five police sources have confirmed with Fox 13 that the person killed is Anthony Mims, also known as Big Juke. Now, Big Juke is the brother of rapper Yo Gotti. Now, we were at that scene earlier tonight. Police say two men were shot outside Perion's restaurant and event center around 4.15. Now that's on Winchester near Kirby. But the story gets a whole lot more eerie when you find out that the would-be killers was watching Big Juke and his family for a long time. For running a crazy uh, ring out there. I can't say the D word because it's too early into the video. <sighs> so basically here's what happened. There are some dudes sitting at the very back aisles or the pews whatever you want to call them and they were just sitting there subsequently they left before everybody and they waited in the car now what i'm about to tell you all the police already know it's a ton of people who can vouch for this that were at the funeral and they're going to come out and say it later on so there were some dudes sitting in the back aisles and what ends up happening is they leave early once they leave early they see big juke and his mama get into a car the mom gets into the back and big juke was on the passenger side so that's why y'all see where he's laid out at because once they fired them shots he fell out the car once they obviously opened up the door they almost killed yo Gotti's mama i didn't want y'all to know that part even the most ruthless killers won't walk you down with your mama in the car with you so for somebody to walk you down while your mama is in the car with you you had to have acquired some bad karma. And Big Jook acquired all the bad karma in the world. Now, if you guys are not aware, Big Jook allegedly put a $40,000 hit on Young Dolph. When I heard that, that, that little boy Trey Trey say, man, I miss my dad, mom. When I heard that, that fucked me up, bro. That shit fucked me up. And keep in mind, I said, if I see Jook, if I see Gotti, if I see, if I see, uh, if I see me go, if I see Youngstar, I'm going to get on that. This shit ain't got nothing to do with nobody else, bro. I said if I see them folk, because these folk got some, had something to do with it, bro. These folk, nigga don't know that Juke put a hit out, bro. Nigga don't know this shit. You know what I'm saying? But we, nah, f*** all that, bro. I need to say that. Niggas ain't going to say that. Nigga ain't going to tell the truth, bro. Nigga ain't, nigga ain't say, man, hey, bro, how you going to feel if a nigga told you, hey, man, look, bro, my Juke put a 40000 dollars hit on you, bro. Like, you, you, nigga, man, come on, bro. Now, this was confirmed when Big Juke right-hand man Hernandez Govain was arrested for masterminding Young Dolph killing and paying out the money. Images of this now infamous white Mercedes Memphis police say was the getaway car used in Young Dolph's murder at Makita's Cookies has been viewed by millions. The car was found outside this abandoned home on Bradley Street days after the killing in late November. It's the same home scene here in this music video featuring Young Dolph's accused killer, Justin Johnson, also known as Straight Drop. Court records show 43-year-old Hernandez Govan, who was just indicted in the rap star slang, along with Johnson and Cornelia Smith, once lived just a few houses down. He's now charged with first-degree murder, attempted first-degree murder, and conspiracy to commit first-degree murder. It's beyond a shadow of a doubt that Big Jug put the hit out on Young Dolph and his right-hand man, Hernandez Govan, recruited the killers and paid out the money. And it's beyond a shadow of a doubt that Big Jug was recently killed due to retaliation for Young Dolph. But the missing puzzle here is, why the people want Young Dolph dead? What was the incentives for the killers outside of money? Well, lucky for you guys, I got the answers to all your questions. Here is the full history of the beef between Young Dolph and Trula Mafia that got Young Dolph killed. Young Dolph was shot and killed in Memphis on November 17, 2021. Now, his death left a lot of answers, right? But what we do know, on the eve of his death, the internet went to work almost immediately. But that ain't no secret. I mean, y'all watch that exemplary telling we did. Y'all watch that tremendous tatter telling we did. We were able to identify Straight Drop and put him at the crime scene where the white Mercedes, which is a getaway vehicle using Young Dolph's murder, 
was found. This right here opened up the floodgates to a lot of things. People started to find, hold up now, yo, Straight Drop and Young Dolph are in pictures together. Like this picture right here. Yo, Straight Drop and Key Glock were old homies. Wait, hold up, they were old homies. Yeah, they were old homies. And then stories began to surface that was unverified, like, yo, Straight Drop and JoJo Spidenham, they were able to get the PRE chain because they took it from Big Moochie Gray. Those are stories that were surfacing and still unverified, right? But nonetheless, those stories began to surface, began to surface, began to surface. And then we're starting to ask, hold up, okay, if they were cool at some point, then where did the issue come? We began to ask ourselves, hold up, when did the hatred, the haterade, when did the hating began to creep into the systems of straight drop and whoever did it. Well, that became more clear with the new developing a Young Dolph case, with the new people of interest that was listed. You see, when Shondell Bennett first got arrested, Shondell Bennett was linked to Black Youngster, right? And Black Youngster history of already sending 100 shots at Dolph. We thought, oh, man. CMG, Black Youngster put this hit out. Be fair, that wasn't too far off. Black Youngster was already arrested for ran out the black SUV and paying the shooters who sent 100 shots at Young Dolph. The Memphis-based rapper, who goes by the name Black Youngster, is facing charges connected to a wild gun battle that happened in the middle of Caldwell Street. The dangerous shootout sent dozens of bullets flying into houses and cars, nearly hitting children. I ain't fired nothing. I don't know nothing. I ain't seen nothing. I don't do nothing. Police sources say the shooting involved two rappers. Later, a rapper named Young Dolph appeared to brag he survived the shooting in a bulletproof SUV. He was in Charlotte to perform at a club during the week of the CIAA tournament back in February. No, I see no. I do no. Benson's attorney says the rapper turned himself in today because police found a van that was involved in the shooting. The attorney tells Channel 9 Benson rented the van, but then it was stolen from him. It's obviously somebody out of red. Somebody snitching. While taking his walk of shame to turn himself in for the shooting of Young Dolph, Black Youngster uttered the famous words, obviously somebody ratting, <laughs> somebody snitching. He will later post paperwork on Instagram begging Young Dolph not to come to court and claiming that Young Dolph is telling on him, right? And show that Young Dolph gave statements to the police. Paperwork cannot be verified, so I can't even speak on the validity of Young Dolph snitching. However, the low-hanging fruit would be to simply make the conclusion, yo, Black Youngster sent 100 shots the first time, all right? He got caught, Dolph didn't get hit. Now he came back to finish the job and pay somebody to finish off the job while Dolph was in Memphis. However, the new developments and the new people of interest that Memphis PD just listed tells a whole different story. It tells an entirely different story. Two new people of interest listed in a Young Dolph death was Devin Barnes and Jonathan Taylor. Now, Jonathan Taylor... You guys see on the left-hand side, right? His name is C.O. Teasy. Now, C.O. Teasy is the current head honcho of the Trula family. You see, Young Dolph had really close ties to the Trula family due to his really close partnership and friendship with Jay Money. Jay Money is on the left of Dolph in the red shirt. Now, you guys see Dolph embracing him. They were really cool. As a matter of fact, Dolph seen a lot of himself in Jay Money. Jay Money was a head honcho at such a young age. Now, Jay Money was an up-and-coming rapper in Memphis, yo. Jay Money had a lot of buzz, yo. Like, Chief Keef took liking to him. He was really close with Chief Keef. Safe to say, Jay Money was on his way to being a household name pretty soon. Like most of these rappers, Jay Money was active. <laughs> Listen, Jay Money was a rapper, but he was active in the streets. Jay Money was a menace, yo. As you guys can see here, at the age of 18 years old, he caught a body, man. Only 18 years old, Jay Money, Jerome White, was charged with the murder of Denzel Monroe, which was actually his homie. Now, the story goes, there was a car that Denzel Monroe was in coming down Birdsong Ferry Road in Memphis. Now, Jerome White, Jay Money, seen the car and started airing it out. Now, it's unclear whether or not he thought that was the option, if he was intentionally doing it, right? Well, Denzel Monroe recognized Jay Money and said, yo, that's my man's Jay Money. Yo, let me hop out and tell him, bro, no, chill, bro, this is me, right? Apparently, when Denzel Monroe hopped out the car, Jay Money did not stop shooting and eventually killed Denzel Monroe because he kept on airing it out. Jay Money, reckless behavior, despite the fact he was an up-and-coming superstar, I'm telling y'all right now, right, in a world where Memphis is running hip-hop, Jay Money was going to be up next, right? He had industry ties already. He was linked to famous rappers already, yo. He was the next guy, yeah, but he was just way too reckless. That reckless behavior would actually come back to bite him and prove to be his demise. Because Jay Money was actually killed, murdered in 2016 by Freddie Yarbrough in a revenge gang shooting. Jeremy White was walking in the parking lot, I'm guessing, to his car. 
Freddie Yarbrough pulled up in a passenger seat and they shot him outside of a strip club called the Kitty Cabaret. Their money loss was profound for the Trula family. Cause one, he was one of the leaders, right? He was the head honcho. So when he passed away, things were in desiree, right? People couldn't believe it, right? Like, yo, bro, who would take out Jay Money? Bro, this is Jay Money, right? He's the boogeyman. This is Jay Money. Who would take him out? So when he passed away, a lot of things started happening, right? Jay Money had all the relationships, all the connections. So when Jay Money passed away, the Trula family went into turmoil and started to lose a lot of those relationships, right? As a matter of fact, the gang started to split up. Due to internal conflicts, you had some members or even associates of the Trula family who said, you know what, bro, I'm going to start my own thing. From this branching off came the double R boys. Now, at the time, nobody would know. That, that split that had nothing to do with Young Dolph will lead to the death of Young Dolph. It will lead to the demise of Young Dolph. It will be a pivotal moment in the death of Young Dolph. Before we get into that, take a look at a quick history between the double R and the Trula Mafia family, right? And how their war escalated. Early on, Big Scar would be cool with another clique called Trula Mafia. But like many other large neighborhood gangs, internal tensions and personal beef between members would lead to a split. Big Scar would leave Trula Mafia to form another crew called Double R, which stands for Rich and Reckless, with some of his partners who were also Grape Street Crips. The other main members of Double R include Baby K, Kato 2X, and Tink. Even though they were once cool, the split ruined the relationship between Double R and Trula Mafia. But it wasn't until the murder of a Double R affiliate named BG that the beef would turn into an all-out war. BG got into it with one of Trula Mafia's most respected hitters, C-Mode. C-Mode was the younger brother of Damo Trula, who was also well-respected in the streets. He came up with dudes like Jay Mula, Zay, and Go Crazy, and together, the crew would run the streets of Memphis. C-Mode and BG hated each other and would send shots back and forth on social media. Both of them were really about that life, so it was only a matter of time before someone got taken out. BG would be the one who ended up losing his life, and the word on the streets was that C-Mode, Zay, and Go Crazy were the killers. The cops would later arrest Go Crazy for BG's murder, proving that the rumors were likely true. The cops believe that BG was in a car with three of his friends and stopped at a red light when True La Mafia got the drop on him and took him out. The shooter also hit the front seat passenger, leaving him critically injured. Go Crazy would later confess to the shooting, but didn't snitch on his homies. He was hit with first degree murder, three counts of attempted murder, aggravated assault, and use of a firearm in the commission of a dangerous felony for admitting to his part in the murder. Even though Go Crazy kept it solid, BG's murder would lead to more problems in the streets. BG was cool with Big Scar, and Double R would take this murder personally, sparking the war with True La Mafia. It wouldn't take long for the gang to seek revenge, and right after BG was killed, Zay would get hit in retaliation. C-Mode was locked up in juvie, fighting a different charge when Zay was killed, and the murder hit after him hard. being released from jail, C-Mode entered the rap game with his track, Send a Hit, where he takes several shots at his enemies. This caught the attention of Double R, and after that, C-Mode was their main target. Not long after that, more Trula Mafia members would lose their lives, with brothers D-Money and J-Money being killed in separate shootings. CEO Jizzle from Double R would reveal what happened to them in the song Rich and Ruthless. On the track, he raps, If you diss on 23, swear to God it's gonna be R.I.P. You ain't hear what happened to the last dude got left on Trig Street. In this bar, he's suggesting that D-Money got smoked for dissing 23 as he was murdered on Trig Street in Memphis. At the, same the death of D-Money was a major loss for the Trula family because this boy D-Money, a.k.a. Derek Blackburn, he was a stepper, folks. I knew this boy was a major stepper because when I found out on Black Friday, the holiday that ninjas are skinning and grinning from ear to ear because they about to get some free stuff or some discounted stuff, he was at the mall spraying it up. The night of shopping after Thanksgiving dinner ends in gunfire, sending customers at the Wolf Chase Galleria into a frenzy. Fox 13's Tony Atkins spoke with one customer. Tony, she says that she always felt safe on Black Friday until yesterday. One man was shot, a 21-year-old who was initially listed in critical condition, but upgraded to non-critical. 
two men helped the three girls find cover. The one in front of me kind of darted to the right, and I just followed him, and I was kind of down like this, but not low enough, so he turned around and pushed my shoulder and said, no, get down on the ground. The next 10 minutes felt like hours as they waited for safety from underneath the car, watching feet go by unsure if they belonged to a gunman. It's a completely different feeling when, you know, you see feet running beside the car and you're holding your breath because you don't know, do they have a gun? Are they good guys, bad guys? You just don't know. We learned that this man, 19-year-old Derek Blackburn, was arrested for unlawful possession of a weapon. Two others were detained, but they were later released. D-Money was really stepping and also being a brother of J-Money, that come with a different type of cachet. So when D-Money passed away, it really forced people to pick sides. Pula family wasn't doing no flip-flopping. You either with them or you with us. And if you neutral, you with them as well. Now, y'all know after a death, the ninjas can't wait to start self-incriminating, right? Oh, they can't wait to start self-snitching, right? And that wasn't no different, folks. Because after the D-Money death, the ninjas took to their music to quickly give us a motive and a hit, man, folks, right? As you guys see from the CEO Jizzle video, he's telling us, yo, D-Money got shot for this in 23 he also got shot here and here and here, right? And there was also a suspect listed. Suspect wasn't listed by the police, but the streets was telling us who did it. That for D Money put Young Dolph in a very peculiar situation because J Money was Young Dolph's boy and D Money is J Money's brother. So with the death of D Money, Young Dolph probably felt sympathy. However, the guys who he was rolling with, right? The guys who he had like close partnership with, right? His little homies, right? Who he had business with, they was dissing D-Money left and right. They was claiming the death of D-Money. I'm going to play you guys a statement from CEO Jizzle, who did an interview about two weeks ago. Now, during this interview, he spoke on Young Dolph and exactly how tight him and PRE is. I met him personally, but just listening to high class street music all the way to where we at today, you know, I've always been a paper out of that yeah. Being around him and being around, like, I'm more closer with all his artists than I was with him, but at the same time, shit. Being around him and being around them, like, that shit, that shit inspired me to do certain shit. A lot of his artists, shit, I ain't even got to say no names. They know. Yeah, nah, I, A lot I, of his artists are like, they love me to death. Like, they inspire nigga, like, bro, you need to rap, bro. You need to rap, bro. I noticed on your birthday, they had showed, that, that, most of all his artists showed you a lot of love on your birthday. I seen a lot, all the reposts. If you I ain't mistaken, probably like shit, about seven of that, about six, seven of that, reposted me and shit on my birthday, you know. I got mad love for them niggas like beyond this rap shit and all that shit. But I got mad love for the whole paper. EO Jizzle confirmed, yo, like me and PRE, we were close, right? So at that time, PRE was closely aligning themselves to the enemies of the Trula family, even though the Trula family and Young Dolph, they started off really close. Now, Dolph was still treading water. But nothing got more dicey than when the streets identified the killer of D-Money as Uncle Danny. Now, Uncle Danny is also a Memphis rapper who currently goes by Big Unk. Now, he's closely aligned to Big Scar. You guys probably noticed Uncle Danny, a.k.a. Big Unk, rocking that PRE chain. And here's where the conflict of interest came, and here's where it really got deadly for Young Dolph. Everybody and a mama know that Uncle Danny, Big Unk, killed D-Money. Even D-Money's mother is on Facebook saying, yo, Uncle Danny killed my son. But here's the thing, though. Everybody who knows Young Dolph and they know J Money, they know they were closely aligned. They know that J Money would have taken a bullet for Dolph. Even so, that when Young Dolph passed away, one of J Money's mother Facebook friend commented on her post and said, yo, rest in peace, Young Dolph. If J Money was alive, he would have made the city cry for Dolph. That's a fact. J Money loved Dolph, right? Right? Listen, J Money looked up to Dolph. That was his big homie. He loved Dolph. Right, so when they commented that they really believed it, it was true. If J Money was alive and Young Dolph passed away, J Money would have made the city cry for Dolph. But then J Money mother responded back, um, he showed and make them cry about him or D Money. He signed D Money Killer. Right now she's saying, listen, is that even the fact that he didn't even slide for J Money? He didn't make them cry about D Money or J Money, right? J Money and his little brother got shot and killed. Young Dolph and do nothing. Hey, listen, man. Young Dolph is a multi man there, right? We don't expect for Young Dolph to slide. But she's saying not only did he not make the city cry for J Money, but yo, he signed his little brother's killer. He signed D Money's killer. Then she said, well, he said, damn, show. She said, yup, the Uncle Denny, aka Big Unk nigga, who he just signed. He said, for real, for real, she said, facts. So now we're starting to see. This wasn't, again, it might be a pay hit still, right? Or it might be the combination of, yo, two sides, two enemies, 
who ain't really rocking with Dolph, they came together to take Dolph out. But what we do know, yo, right, is Dolph was treading water. Now, he just recently signed um, Big Unk right before his death. And when he did that, Dolph went from treading water being neutral to now Dolph was public enemy number one. My boy, you putting money in the mouth of my homie Killer? Who's supposed to be your homie as well? What's going on? For young Dolph, it was just business. But for them, it wasn't business, yo. Listen, they wanted blood. They wanted blood. And that's why you see everybody who got arrested are a part of the Trula family, maybe besides Cornelius Smith. But everybody else is a part of the Trula family. The Trula family already had it out for Young Dolph and would have killed Young Dolph for free. So it's a no-brainer when somebody is offering them money to kill a dude they already don't like. But y'all let me know in the comment section. What do you guys think about this, all right? And if you're still watching, click on this video here somewhere on my screen to find out about this huge DJ Academics drama that ended in a huge altercation on IG Live. Click on this video here to find out what I'm talking about. I'm out of here, folks. Peace.